Happy Halloween or coffee. <laughs> It's Halloween biatches. Because it is October, we are doing creepy stories from my cult segments. And I, this will be the third year running. And we talk about history of the order. We, we talked about the baby graveyard. We've talked about the missing finger. We've talked about the Krishna Venta cult. I have so many of these. These I, I love this time of year. So I'm going to leave link down below all my creepy stories from my cult. So that after, if you're like wanting more after watching this, then you can just watch more and more and more. Because I find... I find all of this stuff really fascinating. I, I do kind of get embarrassed, I'm not gonna lie. Like sometimes I think about the, all the things that my grandpa or tell did, we're gonna be talking about him today. And I'm like, what the hell, you know? And that's not, it's not like my great, 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 great grandpa who like killed someone. This is my grandpa who had sex with his nieces and, and sisters. That's my grandpa, good old grandpa or tell. <laughs> This is the best time of year, honestly. I can finally be the freak that I am in peace. I don't know if you guys care enough for me to put all of the the makeup products that I'm using in the description box down below. If I get enough comments that say, can you put the, this, the makeup products in the description box down below, then I will do it. So if you're new here, we're gonna be talking about my grandpa who who is the starter of incest in the order, the polygamous group that I was born in. And w this is a segment called Creepy Story from my cult. Uh, we like to do these every year for Halloween time. And I decided that the theme for this month is death. So remember we did a Tim Burton theme and then we also did a, um, villain theme. So I'm going to be doing my makeup into something that is death themed. I am going to run and put my contacts on for this. So I'll come right back and then we can start the makeup and the story. We did talk about brother Paul who is alive today. He has 27 wives. Three are his sisters and two are his nieces. Um, I will leave that video in the, the blah, blah, blah. I'll leave the video of that in my description box down below if you're interested in hearing about that. But not, we're not talking about Paul right now. We're talking about Paul's dad or tell. A lot of people in the order don't know the full story. So y'all are gonna get the real story and order members are gonna be like <laughs> This is the real story. Sit down. People in the order think that Grandpa Ortel, Brother Ortel, only had 10 wives. That's why we only have 10 slots up here. But watch till the end of the video and you'll see how many wives Brother Ortel actually had. We'll be talking about all of it starting with Wife number uno. So the very first case of incest that ever happened in the order was Brother Ortel's first wife, and her name is Kareen. Kareen married Ortel in 1950, and Kareen is Ortel's niece. So Ortel's first wife is his niece. Kareen married her uncle. Now, there's debate on why he chose to do that, and also why Kareen and why LaDonna wasn't the first wife because we'll, we'll talk a little more as we get along but LaDonna ends up being the second wife. This is LaDonna right here. There's there's stories on why that is and I remember hearing that um, Ortel was actually really in love with LaDonna but he believed that he should be keeping the keeping the bloodline pure and marrying his niece which I don't understand that because Eldon, the leader before him, did not teach incest. He actually was, it's, from what I've heard, he was against it. And he was also against underage marriages. So when Ortel became the leader, everything went to caca poo doo doo, you know? Because uh, he chose, he decided to do away with the, the, law, the rule of like not marrying incest and also let's marry young girls. That started to happen when Ortel came into leadership. I think Ortel just started to realize that if you marry them younger, when they're little girls and they don't have their driving license, they can't run away because they can't even drive! So, was he smart or was he just manipulative? I don't know. Why he married Kareen, I don't know the actual real answer, but what I believe, being uh, his granddaughter and, and seeing and hearing all the things that I saw and heard in the order, I think that Ortel was very prideful of his bloodline. And so he wanted to make sure that, you know, keeping the bloodline pure because they believe that their bloodline is a direct descendant to Jesus Christ himself. <sighs> I always get so embarrassed saying that. Like, yes, thousands of my cousins believe this. Like, most of my heritage believes that my bloodline is directly to Christ. Ortel marries Corrine in 1950 and then shortly after marries LaDonna in the same year. 
Um, I do remember when I worked at Advanced Copy, which is the orders, the orders uh, copy shop, they would like print off wedding invitations and like they had to have a place in the order for wedding invitations specifically because what are you going to have like a, a wedding invite? printed at Walmart and you're like siblings and, and it shows like his family and her family and they're like why is the dad the same on both sides? So they have to have a advanced copy which is where they print them especially too because a lot of the women were 15 and like anyway. So when I was working at advanced copy I got to see a lot of pictures that a lot of people didn't get the access to and one of those pictures I saw was, and I, if anyone from the order knows what picture I'm talking about please message me. I saw or tell on a beach, in a swimsuit, with his arm around LaDonna, and holding hands with Kareem. I was like, what? Is this their honeymoon? Did they go on their honeymoon together? What the hell? Like, Kareem's just like on her honeymoon, like, I'm so happy to be married to you, or tell, you know, I, I'm the first wife, let's have a honeymoon, and then LaDonna walks in, and she's like, oh, this is awkward. <sighs> she's like, has a wedding ring, and she's like, I don't know. What if LaDonna just showed up on Kareem's honeymoon because she wanted to be part of it? From all the stories I heard about LaDonna, she was very much like, I'm the favorite wife. <laughs> she is the only legal wife. We'll get into that. Let's, 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 sorry. LaDonna, get out of here. This is about Kareem. LaDonna, get out. So Kareem, first wife, first incest marriage, first niece for Ortel to marry. I believe 100% that it was a very secret wedding, spiritual secret wedding, because she was incest. They were of legal age though. She was uh, a grown woman. You know what's interesting is how old Ortel was. Ortel was legit 30, 31, like around that age, 30 or 31 when he married Kareen. I know he was 31 when he married LaDonna. I think he was 30 when he married Kareen, turned 31 and then married LaDonna, like within the span of a few months. As soon as I heard that, I was like, why? Like, I always thought that he was so much younger. Because, like, when you look now at, like, the leader's children in the First Wives family, they're all getting married in their teens. And they have, like, multiple wives by the time they're 20. And so I'm like, why did Ortel only have two wives in his early 30s? Like, <laughs> did people not want to marry him? That's so embarrassing. <laughs> there's, there's talk that he was a little bit of, like, a kind of weird. I mean, he did marry his niece, you guys. He did have the hots for his niece, so... And maybe LaDonna, I mean, I'm, I'm throwing her a bone, maybe she didn't like that he married his niece. I don't know, though. Did she know that he married his, her niece? I kind of wish I could ask her all of this stuff, but I feel like if I knew her, I'd be scared of her. <laughs> she scares me. <laughs> Let's finish Kareen. So Kareen marries Ortel, and she wanted to have kids so bad, but... <sighs> Sadly, she never had any living children and Kareen is actually a really good person like I work the advanced copy story I worked with Kareen at advanced copy before she died and she she told me a lot of stories about like being married to Ortel and like wanting wanting to have kids so bad and and they It's so sad like she she carried I believe two babies to full term and They they just like died shortly after they were born. I'm not sure if it's because they they just had like deformities because of the inbreeding but she could never ever keep a baby and I know that that really affected her because she herself talked to me about it she she's such a sweet lady like you'll never hear me talking about her I love her I think that that was something that she really wished that she could have had for sure and and she was really sad that she couldn't have that and I fully believe it's because they were so closely related that she couldn't have those kids but she told stories about it all the time, and I remember those stories really well because she was old and she told them over and over and over. So I remember them in detail because I heard them ten times. Anyway, Corrine actually lived a very long life, though. When I worked with her, I was like, how is she so healthy? And, like, I believe she lived to get into her 90s, and she was still working when I, like, she was old when I was working with her. Just think about it, she got married in 1950 and she was working with me in 2010. She was still working. That's like what, she got married in 1950, she was at least like 20, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, she was like in her 80s when she was working with me. And I always wondered why she was so healthy and she would come to work with, like, she, I, she'd be like, do you want some potato chips? And I'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, I love potato chips. And she would give me a bag, I swear to God, a ba plastic baggie 
of just raw sliced potatoes, raw. And those were her potato chips. And I remember thinking, is this a joke? But she literally just starts eating them. And I'm like, this is the secret of youth. This is how she's gotten so old and still like, still moving and grooving. She would eat ma majority raw food. Like almost everything she had was raw food. She would use a, a, a fruit dryer thing and she would come with like dried pears and stuff. Um, which those were actually really good. I liked those, but the, <laughs> the potato chips, I don't know. I just pretended I liked them for her, but I was like, whoa, whoa. Kareen is not the only one of her sisters to marry or tell, actually. There was four of Kareen Gustavison. So there's Gustavisons, right? Kareen Gustavison. Four Gustavisons married or tell. So yeah, that means he married four nieces just from that one family <sighs> why people just started to go along with it i don't understand because i don't know it's probably just because he was the leader and he said so but for me i'm like i just i don't know because when or like everyone talks about how when eldon was the leader everything was so much better and i'm like then why did you guys let it get like this why did you guys start to just all of a sudden be like okay yeah i'll be okay with you marrying your sister and your niece and blah 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 I don't know. I can't imagine the next wife, LaDonna, I can't imagine that she liked that because she she was an outsider. So Kareen was born in the order. LaDonna, sorry, I don't know if Kareen was born in it, but she was definitely raised in it. She could have been born out of it and then her family brought her into it when she was really young. But, but LaDonna was not born into it. Like LaDonna, I don't know. So we're moving on to LaDonna. We just got the first wife, Kareen, and now we're on to LaDonna. By the way, Kareen, sorry, last thing about Kareen, she passed away in 2022, so she lived a very long life. I just feel sad because I'm like, I wish so bad she could have experienced something different than that. She could have, I, I, I believe she would have had kids if she wasn't married to Orto, but whatever. Okay, moving on. LaDonna marries Orto shortly after Kareen. June 8th, 1950 is when LaDonna marries Orto. And LaDonna is the only legal wife of Ortel. So if you look at LaDonna's grave stone, I'll show a picture, she gets to have Kingston on her gravestone, and she has the 8-2, which means, because Ortel's number, remember I said his number's number 8, and LaDonna is the second wife of number 8, so on her gravestone it's 8-2. You'll see this on, I think, almost all of Ortel's wives. So LaDonna is the second wife, but the only legal wife that Ortel had. So they had a courthouse wedding, and it's believed, I mean, almost everyone in the order knows this, LaDonna, like, LaDonna ran Ortel, like, he did whatever LaDonna said. LaDonna was the top biatch. And, I mean, from the stories I heard, it sounds like Ortel was pretty, like, in love with LaDonna, because he did go all the way to Washington to get her, because remember, her dad is, this is gonna get confusing, I'm gonna try to, like, just make it brief, LaDonna's dad didn't really get along with the order and I believe he either was a member and got excommunicated or just like didn't like the order. I don't know. There was some rift that happened with LaDonna's dad that made them kind of like distance themselves and then Ortel like runs to Washington to go get LaDonna and that makes me believe that Ortel like maybe really liked her. LaDonna was known to be like a very like she was a very beautiful young woman and she had a lot of character, a lot of uh a lot of personality. So Ortel runs off to Washington to go get LaDonna. I, I really wish that I could have heard the conversation that went down that made her like come right back and marry him. I do think a lot of people, a lot of women get very obsessed with the idea of being married to a leader because of that eternal salvation that they get, you know, like, oh. And you know what's crazy is like, I've heard order members say stuff like, these women are gold diggers. These women are like they talk down on women for for like marrying for money. What is the difference between marrying for money and marrying for your salvation? They're both marrying for your own personal gain, right? So like, why is that not frowned upon? Like, oh, I only married you to get this ticket to heaven. Okay, so I don't know. To me, it's like don't talk bad about a girl for being marrying for money and then support a girl who's marrying for her ticket to heaven you know it's just weird you guys are weird what should they be marrying for then love <laughs> shut up anyway so LaDonna marries whether it's for love or for control or whatever but she married him at the age of 18 
and Ortel was 31. LaDonna is, and I, I think a lot of you guys already know this, but I'm going to mention it right now. LaDonna is the mother to the leader now, Paul. I have a whole video on all of LaDonna's kids and the leadership and how, how they're all like related and blah, 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 blah. I'm so curious though as to how LaDonna's dad, Eskel, liked the fact that LaDonna married Ortel, the leader of this cult, who again, there was a riff and there's there's debate like my side of the family says that it was that Eskel never wanted to be a part of the religion because when they started to do the consecration thing then they were like hey give us your truck and he had the only truck in the order and then he there's a quote that my family says is he says like my like my women I don't share my trucks and then they 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 didn't think that he was being a very good boy a very good order member and so they told him to leave. Where's my black, black eyeliner? I know I just brought it in here. Hmm. Here. Okay. <laughs> Do you think my ancestors are proud of me? Ah! I just yanked my earring. I think that means no. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa Ortel. <laughs> ah! Don't hurt me. I did hear this story that her dad, Eskel, who is my great grandpa, by the way, because LaDonna is my grandpa Ray's sister. So, so I heard this story that while Eskel was like out of town, Brother Eldon, the original leader, number one, like sent someone to go let him know that he's no longer a member of the order. <laughs> and then when they asked him, they said, he, they, he said, what do I tell Eskel, like if, if he asks why, why he's not a part of the order? And then Brother Eldon told him to say, just tell him that he's not order material. Okay, rude. But I keep hearing that uh, Eskel was buried in order garments and that the n <gasps> that he was given a number and LaDonna made them, did not allow them to reassign that number. I don't know how to do this in a way that's going to make a lot of sense, but uh, the order believes that Ortel only married 10 wives, okay? Kareen, LaDonna, we're going to talk about the third one right now. I'm going to say this is the third wife, but technically it's not the third wife. Ortel married three other women before this woman. So technically, this would be wife number six, okay? Because we have LaDonna, well, sorry, Kareen, LaDonna, and then the three wives, and then this one. But, as you all know, my grandma Isabel, actually, on her gravestone, she has her as number six. Eight dot six means the sixth wife of number eight. So they document it as if he only had ten wives. But that's not true. He married three women before this wife of the, this this one. But I'll tell you at the end of the video. I'm just going to tell you the version that the order says is true. But I'll tell you the real version at the end. So stick around. So wife number three, really number six. But wife number three is another Gustavuson sister. So we had Kareem, which is the niece. And then we have this other Gustavuson sister. She's still alive and she's the only one of the Gustavuson sisters who actually could have kids. I'm hearing that uh, quite a few, if not all of her kids, are, are have a really hard time seeing or are legally blind. This next wife is known as the fourth wife of Ortel. She is still alive to this day. If you guys remember me ever talking about Cardline, do you remember who what Cardline is? I'll, I'll explain it for the newcomers. She's over Cardline, but card line in the order because the order has their own banking system and so like we don't go to like US Bank or Wells Fargo or Chase or whatever we go to the order bank and we turn in our money to the order. How do you draw out money though? Because they don't give us credit cards. No, no, no. They don't want us to be having that easy access to our money. <laughs> That's the Lord's money. What do you think you can do? Have it? No! Um, anyway, so what they do is what I would do actually. I remember doing this. We would call what's called card line. You go beep boop boop boop. Hello? And this woman would pick up the phone or tell his fourth wife, technically his eighth wife, but again, we'll get into that. Beep, boop, boop, hello? Yes, can I get money out? And she would say, mm, mm no. And then you'd be like, okay, thank you. <laughs> I love Jesus. Or she would say, what's it for? And you'd say, I, sh <laughs> I was a biatch when I was in the order. I would always say, uh, extra large tampons or like something that made them really uncomfortable. And they'd be like, oh, jeez Louise. Why did you have to say that? Why did you ask? you did have to give them a reason and they could just tell you no not good enough reason call back tomorrow or don't call at all this is our money now 
anyway, she was nice. I don't really have any real beef with her, but she is also Ortel's niece, by the way. She's the fourth niece to marry him. Hmm, yeah. If you, if you count the ones that are technically illegitimate wives. But yeah, so she's one of the nieces. She's from a different mom, though. So same dad, different mom. Sorry, this gets confusing. But, like, the Gustavusons are a different mom that, that had them. A uh, different mom, but same dad as those nieces that married Ortel. So this wife married Ortel in 1958. So that means in the span of 1950 to 1958, Ortel married, like, eight women. So, like, a woman a year. I think that he got married, like, in the span of months with multiple women. But mind you, we only know of these four in the order, but technically we're on number eight. I think I should stop saying that because I think I'm confusing you guys. So I'm just going to stop saying that. Okay, okay, okay. This is wife number four. When she dies, she's probably going to have hate. Hate? She's going to have eight dash four on her gravestone. This is what's interesting, though, is when she married him, she, like, waited eight years to have kids with Ortel. And I don't know why she waited that long. I don't know if there was complications. I don't know if... I have no idea. But she does have seven kids now. And I'm hearing that she still is technically, like, in charge of Cardline, but she's only... She can only give access to, like, small amounts of money. Sh Sh Rachel Young, Paul's sister, is in charge of the big money. Don't want to be... Don't want to be touching too much of that money now, because it's not yours, it's mine. I mean the Lord's. Don't be selfish. I'm going to put a lash on this side. Number three, wife number three and wife number four are still alive. And wife number five is still alive. But I don't think she's in the order anymore, actually. So she married Ortel. What does she even go by? <laughs> I don't even know. But she's the wife right before my grandma. Right before my grandma. So wife number five. She ended up having eight kids but left the order. And I think she still lives in an order. Oh. So, like, she bought the home. But the, you know how the order, the order never lets you have your name on a home. So I'm going to be curious to see what happens with her home when she, you know, either decides to, you know, I don't know if she's going to decide to reclaim it or when she passes away, if she wants to have her kids have it. I don't know. That's the sad thing. This happens to so many older women in the order. They'll have a home that they paid off or that their husband gifted them or it's, it's their home and then the order just takes it. So luckily she's still able to live in that home even though she's technically like not a member. But I don't know. It doesn't have her name on it so I worry for her. But yeah, she had eight kids with Ortel. All right. My grandma. Grandma Isabel. I have a soft spot for my grandma Isabel because I believe that Isabel, I don't know, I think she kind of got conned into being a wife. I feel bad whenever I, I like think about my grandma Isabel's life because uh, it's kind of sad, but she, she was born June 19th of 1938 to September 25th, 2007. She was not born in this group, but she did come from... So she comes from Price Johnson's lineage, which Price Johnson is the brother to Leroy Johnson, who I believe was the leader of the Warren Jeffs group. So so Isabel was pretty, like, affiliated with polygamy. But the story goes that, like, her dad wanted to join the order, but, but back in the day it was, like, they, they were more of, like, con about consecrations. This is before Ortel was a part of anything. It was back when, when it was just like a Davis County co-op society. Then, this is the story I heard, is that uh, Isabel's family wanted to all join, but they were talking to the leadership, and then Eldon's like, well, we don't have enough. We're only getting one worker, one man, and then all of these mouths to feed. We don't know if we can have you guys, like, actually join. But, I mean, uh, apparently they still, like, affiliated with them, and, you know, because Ortel ends up marrying Isabel as his 10th wife. I, I wonder so badly if she was coerced or if she was like, oh, he's, he's, you know, the leader. So there, there's, maybe there was some sort of, I think that there was. I think that she was like, people were telling her like, the leader wants you. And she was like, who, me? What? I don't know. I don't think she talked like that. <laughs> but my grandma Isabel ends up having 13 kids with Ortel. One of them being my dad, who is still in the order to this day, and he he birthed me. Um, I did know my grandma Isabel briefly. She was 
I don't know, I kind of feel like by the end of her life she was just kind of sick of the orders poo-poo. <laughs> but the sad part is, like, I'm pretty sure that Isabel did not like that her kids were... Because Isabel had 13 kids, and of all of her daughters... Every single daughter that stayed in the order ended up marrying a half-sibling. There was a lot of manipulation going on, and they had my grandma's daughters just all marry half-siblings. And I don't feel like my grandma liked that, but again, I'm not going to try to speak for her, but I could just imagine, like, because her young little daughter, remember the story of Andrea? Her young little 15-year-old daughter, they make her marry... Uh, Jason, who is the son of LaDonna, so half-siblings, remember? If LaDonna's kid is marrying Isabel's kid, that means they have the same dad or tell, right? Same dad, different moms, marrying each other. So Andrea from my grandma Isabel married Jason from LaDonna. They were like teenagers, and because they were so incest, when when Andrea started having complications when she was pregnant, they were too like afraid to take her to the doctors. Finally, they take her after she had gone blind. But her, her baby did live, but he ended up having cerebral palsy and some issues due to the traumatic birth, and I believe due to his parents being siblings. And then David, the one who is... David, the one who went to prison for raping his niece, he's married to two of Isabel's daughters. And that, again, means half-siblings. And he has kids with them. So I just... I don't know. The more I think about... The more I think about Grandma Isabel's life in the order and just the things that happened, I don't know. Because, cause like, towards the end of her life, they shipped her out to Ibapa, and I always wondered, why did they make my Grandma Isabel go live in Ibapa? And a lot of people were like, well, they, we needed someone to man, like, the farm over there, but I don't know. I think they put her over there because she was putting up a stink about them marrying their daughters off to their siblings. And then they're like, hey, uh, God told us that you're supposed to live in Ibapa. Huh? <laughs> Go over here right now. Get away from your kids. I don't know. That's just my speculation. It makes sense to me. I'm going to try this one. I'll be right back. I'm going to put this one on. I don't know. The more I talk about, like, the kids of, of my grandma Isabel, it's also really sad. Because she had that son that got hit by a car. She had Andrea that died because of that pregnancy. And then I also have another aunt... Jesse's Jesse's wife that died I believe because Jesse was being an asshole and wouldn't let her go to the hospital and then we have another one of Jesse's wives that died that was Isabel's daughter that was ugh, there's so many mixed stories on this she was like fasting some people said she died in the tub some people said she died in her sleep but again very young age all these went these both these women had a lot of babies too like I just feel like ugh, these women were just treated like cattle but so she, so right now, of grandma's 13 kids, let's see, one, two, three, four, four have already passed away. And they're pretty young. Like, I don't know, I'm just a little shocked. But on a happier note, I do think grandma had somewhat of a fun life. I always thought that she was like a super lover of the order. My dad told me all these stories that, oh yeah, your grandma is beloved the order. She was, she loved Ortel, she was so dedicated, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dang. I didn't know that. And then I left the order and I met a woman who was really close with my grandma, a woman my grandma's age who was friends with her. And she told me a lot of gossip that Grandma Isabel didn't like what was going on in the order and Grandma Isabel didn't like that the kids were marrying siblings. And the Grandma Isabel would drink a little wine on occasion. Interesting. Wouldn't that be so cool? I wish that I could have drank some wine with Grandma Isabel. She sounds fun. I only got to know the order version of her. You know, everyone in the order has that an order version of themselves and then the real version of themselves. And if you're lucky enough and close enough with them, you'll see the real version of themselves. And, and usually they're really nice, cool people. On to the next wife, so number seven. She was married October 19th, 1960. And she had eight children with Ortel, and she's still alive to this day. Now, wife number eight, her name was Alice, Alice Christensen. And... She's a part of the Mattingly family. So Allison, Jessica, Andrea, I believe she's her, their great aunt. And there's some rumors that went around about this wife. She got married to Ortel December 12th of 1960. So, so remember, the wife before her was, wife number seven got married October 1960. Wife number eight got married, Alice, in December of 1960. So literally within the span of a, a few months, then Ortel married this one and then that one. And the, there's rumors about Alice because Alice only had 
six kids with Ortel, and there's rumors that Ortel did not treat Alice very well, sadly, because for whatever reason, some people speculate that she was the most unhealthy of the wives and uh, didn't take care of herself as much. That made Ortel, because she didn't take care of herself like that, that made Ortel not want to procreate with her. I don't know how true that all is. But she, she did only have six kids, and there were people that said that Ortel didn't treat her very good, and he didn't go to the house very much. Because you have to go to the house to be able to procreate and have kids, and he only has six kids, so. If the shoe fits. I'm going to do more contour on this side. Okay, we are on wife number nine. Th this is uh, Priscilla's relative. Ooh. Wife number nine is Kathleen Tucker. Tucker, does that sound familiar? Priscilla Tucker. This is Priscilla Tucker's grandma. She only had six kids with him. She's one of the last wives to marry Ortel, but she's also Ortel's half-sister. So Ortel and Kathleen have the same dad, but Ortel's mom is Vesta and Kathleen's mom is Lavenda. So half-siblings and they had six kids together. We're now on the last, the last wife of, of Ortel that the Order believes was married to Ortel. And this is the Porter Mom. Remember we talked about the Porter Mom in the, the web of my incest bush when we were talking about how, how I come into the mix. Anyway, we talk about the Porter Mom. The Porter Mom had a daughter that married my dad. Remember we talked about this? I'm going to say it again and I'm going to try to say it in a way that's less confusing than I said it in the other video. The Porter mom, okay, is Ortel's wife. And my grandma Isabel is Ortel's wife. The Porter mom had a daughter that married my dad, meaning half siblings, right? So that Porter mom was the last wife of Ortel's. And uh, when Ortel died, because she only had three kids with Ortel, so she could still bear children. And usually when you can still bear children, um, and your husband dies, they want you to bear more children. There's that whole debate where, because cause I'm going to bring up Priscilla again in this episode. Priscilla's dad, so, so remember Kathleen had some kids with Ortel. One of Kathleen's sons marries Priscilla's mom. And um, Priscilla's dad passes away after her, after her mom has only three kids with him. This is the Tucker family. And then Priscilla's mom gets married again to a numbered man whose number is 100, and they have children together. And there's this big, wide debate on, you know, who, who, who does the wife go back to in the afterlife? Because women can't live. Women can't have multiple partners. Are you, are you pulling my leg? <laughs> what? Equality? This is a speculation. Where does where does Priscilla's mom go in the afterlife? To her original husband or to the husband she married here on Earth? And there's this thing about like the original husband is the OG, like that's who they go back to. So so with this Porter mom, when Ortel dies, she gets remarried to Ortel's son. Porter mom marries Ladonna's son Joe. So that's like you having a spouse who had like a shit ton of other spouses and they had all these kids with all these other spouses and you're the newer wife and then your husband dies and you just go to the other spouse and, and pick one of the kids and say, I'm gonna marry those that kid. Like your stepson, you're marrying your stepson basically. She marries Joe and proceeds to have two more kids. So she had three kids with Ortel and two kids with Joe. And I think that there's debate on if she's gonna go back to Ortel and those two kids are Ortel's kids. This is a good segue into the rest of this story. So, mind you, 10 wives, the order believes that they only had 10 wives. But the reality is Ortel married 15 women, 15. And there are these illegitimate wives that he married because technically they married him under Eldon, saying that they wanted to be married to Eldon in the afterlife. Let me explain, let me explain, let me explain. Let's backtrack. Sorry. Let me just get mine out. <laughs> so I am so unprepared for this. So embarrassing. I've rearranged these in the back. As you can see, there's 15 wives, okay? So you see, number one and two doesn't change. It's still Corrine and LaDonna. But the third wife, actually, third, fourth, and fifth wife are all... Hmm, let me tell you. 
Number three is the first of Eldon's widows to marry Ortel. So remember, Eldon is the leader before Ortel. So what happens was she was married to Eldon. I feel like I'm telling you the juicy gossip. It's a secret. Not even a lot of, not even like most order people don't know this. So you guys are getting the real juicy goss. So what happened was number three, she's uh, Mary Stoddard. She was born July 7th, 1925 and died July 10th of 2012 at the age of 87 years old. So she was one of Eldon's widows. She was the first of Eldon widows to marry or tell. Okay, so what happened was she was married to Eldon and Eldon got very sick at a very young age and he died, which we will be talking about in another creepy story from my Cole episode, so hang tight. But so she only had one kid with Eldon. She's like, that's not fair. I want to have more kids with Eldon and he died. So I'm going to marry Ortel, but I'm going to have Ortel's kids. Ortel's kids are going to be Eldon's in the afterlife. So Ortel's just like the surrogate type of thing for Eldon's babies. That's what they believed. They believed that and this is why they don't count this woman, number three, as an actual wife, because technically she got married as uh, in being married to Eldon. So she had two more kids with Ortel, but they believed those kids were Eldon's and then she passes away, right? So she believes that when she passes away, she is rejoined with Eldon and the one kid and then the two kids that are Ortel's, but they're really Eldon's. Is that not like the, the absurd, absurd? I'm just, for my own notes, I want to write this down. So, Eldon, wife. <laughs> but Ortel just helped, you know, he was just helping a brother out, you know? I don't know how, how if, if like, the wedding's probably different. Like, like, they say, do you, Eldon, take this woman to be, like, what? Do they not use Ortel's name? Because in the afterlife, it's, it's, basically the marriage is illegitimate. You guys. It's weird. That's what it is. Anyway, so then after her, Marion Hanson Tucker, another of Eldon's widows, marries number four, marries Ortel. The first child is Eldon's and then Eldon dies and then she marries Ortel, but Ortel's marrying her for Eldon. So, you know, that whole weird thing, basically giving her kids for, I don't know if like it's Eldon semen from heaven that's impregnating her, impregnating her. Do they look like Eldon? Are the genetics Eldon's? I, you know, probably, honestly. The first kid was Eldon's, Eldon dies, and then the, the, she has six more with Ortel that are Ortel's kids, but not really, they're Eldon's kids, okay? Ortel's just doing a favor. So again, Eldon's widow. One kid is Eldon's, six kids are Ortel's. But when she dies, she gets returned back to heaven to Eldon. She was born April 1927 and died March 1992 at the age of 64. So, so here's the weird thing is Eldon died in 1948. And then I guess he just had all these widows that were like, well, we still want to have kids and we want, but we want to go back to Eldon. So then this, this woman, her last name is Hall. She would be the, the wife number five. Um, so, so this is an interesting story, actually. She wanted to marry Eldon at a very young age, and she went to Eldon and she was like, hey, I want to marry you, uh, let's go, <laughs> let's do this. And then, um, Eldon was literally like, uh, you're 15. And see, this is, this is a story that they like to t t say in the order when they're, they're like, Eldon wasn't for underage marriages or else he would have married her. You know, at 15, he wouldn't have had a problem with it. He told this woman, this ha hall woman, to come back when she's of age. So time goes on, um, and she comes back when she's, like, tw in her 20s. And the Eldon, by this time, is on his deathbed. He's, he's dying. And there's a quote where he tells her, it's too late now. There's speculation that he was saying, oh, it's too late because I'm dying. And other people believe that he said it's too late because she had went and sowed her wild oats on the outside and then came back. I don't know. I, I think the dying one sounds more real. Eldon dies in 1948 and then she marries at 22 to Ortel. Five years after Eldon's death, then Ortel agrees to, to like, this was like a proxy, stand as proxy, meaning I'm gonna be Eldon. <laughs> I am Eldon. He's basically like giving Eldon the kids that he couldn't have because he died and she is going to go return to Eldon. But she she was never married to Eldon. She just wanted to be married to him so bad that 
uh, or tells like, oh, I'll do that for ya. I'll do that for ya. I, I'm Elden. I'm Elden. Wonder if like every night he would be like, hey, sweetie. And she'd be like, oh, Elden. I don't know. At this point, that's not the weirdest thing I've ever heard, you know? It's not even close, actually. So this hall woman, though, only had four kids with Ortel. And, which is shocking, right? Because, like, four kids, she was in her 20s when she married you. Why'd you only have four kids with you? And it's believed that Ortel kind of, like, begrudgingly did that favor for Eldon, and he didn't really want... Like, it, to him, it was like, these aren't even my kids. These are Eldon's kids. That's that's the rumor, is that he kind of just didn't really want to do it, but he did it for Eldon. And, and the men in the Order are very, like, prideful about how many kids they have, and, like, this is my posterity. And to him, it wasn't his posterity. He was doing Eldon a favor, so he only gave her four kids. And, and there was also rumors that he wasn't very nice to her. Okay, so that was wife number five, right? So we have another one of Eldon's. This one's not a widow. These two were married to Eldon. This one never was. But she will be rejoined with him in heaven if we just pray hard enough. And then, so we did talk about already wife number six is actually wife number three, who is Corrine's sister. So that would be Corrine's sister right there. She's still alive to this day. Wife number seven. This is an interesting story. Sorry, I'm, I'm taking a break from my makeup because I want to make sure I get all of this info correct. So wife number seven is the third full Gustavuson sister, so the third niece to marry Ortel, okay? And she marries him, I believe, in 1957. But do you guys remember the story, Rolene's story, when we talked about the, the homes getting taken away? I'll, I'll leave that video linked down below. It's her story. So she ends up being technically wife number seven because the story goes that her mom actually was on her deathbed. So, so wife number seven's mom was on her deathbed and she was like, marry or tell. Promise me that you're going to marry or tell. The sad thing is, I was like, why was she on her deathbed? How was she was so young? She was like in her 40s. Why was she dying? She was on a 40-day fast. And I guess like something happened where it either got broke wrong or, or it was done in, you know, I honestly think 40-day fast should be done in like a medical setting or like you have to, I don't know. I think that the death was a sad death and it shouldn't have happened, but... I also wasn't there, so I don't know exactly what happened, but the story goes she was on a 40-day fast and something happened inaccurately or unhealthily. They broke the fast wrong. Something happened wrong where she was dying. And you have to be really careful with 40-day fast. You you can't just, like, eat a steak. If you eat a steak right after your 40-day fast, you will die. Your body's not going to be used to digesting that. You have to slowly get your digestive system back up and running. So on her deathbed, she's like, hey... Mary Ortel, and then she passes away. So this this woman is like, I have to marry Ortel, but my mom's dying wish was I need to marry Ortel. So she does, but she's she was so against it because that was her uncle, and um, she couldn't consummate the marriage. And because she couldn't consummate the marriage, she left. So that's why a lot of people in the order don't count this marriage, but technically there was a ceremony, they did have a wedding, and that would be this way. They had a wedding, it was a niece, but she couldn't consummate the marriage and she fled. It's kind of similar to the David and Marianne story. You know, David O, who went to prison for raping his niece. Um, Marianne didn't want to be married to David, but they made her, and this was the niece situation. It's, it reminds me of that. It's giving very much David O. Kingston vibes. She does, this woman does, like, come back to the order, and she ends up marrying, um, you know, the Peterson story. She has kids. She has roots there. I'm just going to leave a link to her, her story in the description box down below. There's so much more to her story. And then, of course, number eight, we already talked about the card line girl. Hello? You want your money? <laughs> no. Why do you even work there? You don't even give us our money. You should just have a robot automated system that tells us no. Then you can go home. And then we have still living number nine. She's the one that left the order but lives still lives in order house. Right, 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 right. Had eight kids. Number ten. Technically, Grandma Isabel is number ten. My Grandma Isabel. Number eleven and twelve. Remember, they got married within a, a few months of each other. This was Alice. Should I go through and tell you, like, which ones are alive and which ones are not? <gasps> Do you guys care? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. Number 13 is another Gustavuson. She would be the fourth of the Gustavuson sister nieces to marry Ortel. So she tried having children with Ortel, was unsuccessful and they, they tried a lot, like they wanted kids 
and could never have kids. She leaves Ortel, and the, the second person she's with, she accidentally gets pregnant. Like, so I believe, and I'm sure she believes too, because they were so closely related, it was like Mother Nature's way of saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. Hmm. Priscilla's grandma, the half-sister who married Ortel. And then again, the porter wife. So 15 wives total. We just added five because the order doesn't like to count the the marriage that didn't work out. The mar the order doesn't like to count the marriages that didn't work out or the 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 Eldon's wives. They don't count those ones because those are Eldon's wives, but technically they did have a wedding here on this earth and they did have children. So, I count those ones. Anyway, I was going to finish my outfit, but I don't know. Oh, sorry. Hello. I forgot that this had the microphone on it. <laughs> this does not look like the picture. She looks great. She looks great. I look like the version of her that rolled out of the gutter. What the hell is this? I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. I'm just probably gonna go without the wig because I'm very, I, I hate this. I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So we have, did anyone guess who I am already? Good job if you did. And you win a prize. Where's the thingy? I don't know how to do this. Oh! I'm an angel and a devil. Angel, devil, angel, demon. Do you like it? Do you like it? Angel? Demon. Angel? Demon. Angel? Do you like it? Well, thank you guys so much for watching and joining the, the first episode of the creepy stories from my cults. Uh, tune in next week to hear the resurrection story of Eldon Kingston. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They thought that he was gonna come back to life like good old Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? Ah! <laughs> Anyway, I will link down below all of my other Creepy Story from My Cult videos. I have so many of them. Go watch them. And then also, I will see you on Sunday for a culty cup of coffee. Love you guys. Bye.